Mark, everybody wants to know about the relatively new type 2 diabetes drugs that are being used for weight loss. Yes, there's a lot of these drugs, Mongero, Wagovi, Ozempic. They're all GLP-1 agonists. I'd like to talk mainly about Mongero. It's the one that's become the most hot in today's um, uh, news. It's a dual action. It's a GLP-1 receptor agonist and a GIP receptor agonist, so it has a dual mechanism of action. And the other ones are just GLP-1 agonist only. Um, they work by mimicking proteins that our body already makes. GLP-1 is a protein that's made in the small intestine that causes slowing of emptying of food from the stomach. It causes early satiety in the brain so you feel full faster. It increases insulin production from the uh, cells in the pancreas and it blocks glucagon secretion. That's what GLP-1 does, but Mongero also causes GIP um, uh, it's a GIP hormone uh, analog, and it also increases insulin production and causes early feelings of fullness when you eat. So it is more effective at weight loss and diabetic control than the single mechanism of action drugs. So let me ask you this, Mark. I understand what you meant by all that, but can you kind of explain why Maljaro seems to work a little bit better than Wigopi and Ozempic. It's the, it's the dual mechanism of action. It's the GLP-1 agonist, and it's also the GIP agonist effect. So it's, it's got a double whammy effect as opposed to just one compared to the other uh, drugs in class. Okay. Um, now, all of these drugs have side effects. They Mainly they're GI nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, sometimes constipation. You can have gallbladder issues with them. You can even get pancreatitis. There's some more serious potential side effects. If somebody has a family history of medullary thyroid cancer, they can't take these drugs or a condition called MEN2, which is multiple, multiple endocrine neoplasia 2. You would know about this in your family history. There's um, some issues with kidney function and tachycardia. But there's also burgeoning research on using these drugs for other things than diabetes and weight loss. And it is worth noting that Mongero is not approved for weight loss yet. It probably will be. It causes up to 20-22% weight loss in the first year of your total body weight. And I believe up to like 26% at a year and a half. It's, it's really a profound effect when combined with diet and exercise. Um, but there are some other new potential benefits that are being looked at with these drugs, such as improvement in diastolic heart failure, which is overwhelmingly the most common type of heart failure. It, it keeps the myocytes from being further damaged in the heart, which are the muscle cells. It also helps stabilize and prevent atherosclerosis, so um, blockages in the heart arteries and blockages in the brain arteries that cause stroke and heart attacks. It can lower cholesterol, lower blood pressure, and there's even research, despite my previous comment about the medullary thyroid cancer, there's even research in these things, uh, these types of drugs reducing overall cancer rates of other types of cancers. Now, all of that research is ongoing and the, the final results are not out yet, so that's just into the future. So it is a very promising and exciting class of drugs. Uh, another uh, downside is they're extremely expensive right now, uh, over a thousand dollars a month, basically. Now, can they cause hair loss? I've looked that up, and I, I think we talked about it in the past, uh, you and I, and I could not tell where they directly cause hair loss. But with any dramatic weight loss, you can get something called telogen effluvium, where it resets the hair growth cycle, and you can get some hair loss. So I think. The best I could tell, and I'm, I'm certainly not an expert in these drugs, is that was the mechanism of hair loss with these drugs. Now, what about the compounded form of these medications? What are your thoughts on that? I don't really know. I know that compounding is an individual practice done by individual pharmacies that are licensed to do that. These drugs are all patented, so I don't know how they're actually compounding these drugs. Uh, Mount Jero's trade name is Terzepatite or something like that. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure. So I don't know how you can make that compound 
and 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 be legal with it. It's. Um, I think there's some ongoing litigation about that. Yeah, I did see that on the news recently. So I'm, I don't know that that's completely. Look, they may be making it. It may be safe. It may be legitimate, but I don't think it's necessarily legal. What are your thoughts on long-term effects? Like when people stop these medications, do you think they may have a rebound in weight gain? Well, you do get a rebound in weight gain if you just stop them and don't continue the diet and exercise and uh, the adjunctive means of weight control. I don't know that the final answer is in on that. I've, I've talked to patients that have used these things and I've read various things where people stay at a plateau dose because they're trying to control diabetes and weight. I've talked to people that were using them exclusively for weight loss and they were able to back down on the dose once they reached their goal weight and even able to extend the length of time between the shots. But all of that's individual choices that the patients made in conjunction with the advice of their healthcare provider. I don't know that it's actually uh, a regimented way to do that yet. Uh, it will be interesting to see how this all shakes out in the long run, particularly with the broader potential effects such as heart failure, heart disease, stroke, blood pressure control, cholesterol, et cetera. That, that's, that's very interesting to me. So what's your overall opinion on these drugs, good or bad? I think they're here to stay. That's doubtless. I think that anything that causes a tremendous amount of weight loss is good in a population that's obese with a bunch of uh, cardiac and uh, vascular risk factors. So you, it's like all drugs. There's up and there's down. There's good and there's bad. There's good side effects and bad side effects. So it always boils down to an individual patient dealing with an individual practitioner that's doing what is best for that person. And so you can't make a blanket statement, are they good or are they bad? because that is always individualized. But I would say with certainty that they're here to stay, it looks like.